Let's go, old man. You know what? I can do this all day. Yo, what are you guys doing? Um, you started it. You don't have any work to do? Try to make me sign papers. Man, freaking nerds. All right, you guys, we're back. Another episode of Break Room Blitz. Thanks for watching. I'm your boy DeAnthony. Got my boy Don here and my boy Conch. <laughs> okay, what everyone wants to talk about Captain America Civil War. Woo. Everyone's talking about this. Everyone couldn't wait to see it. At least we couldn't anyway. <laughs> oh, no. So, the question is. Did it live up to its counterpart, Ooh. the comic Civil War? I think that the thing about uh, the Civil War comic book and the way that they incorporated that into the movie, uh, it, everything was based upon this Hero Registration Act, right? right? And so they have this law. All the heroes register, and you're out with your true identity, right? And the thing about this one is that they had a similar one as far as a, they call it the Sokovia and what the events that happened for Age of Ultron, the Sokovia Accord or whatever that was, you know. You no, know, I walked out of the theater <laughs> and uh, when the movie was coming to a close, I knew it was coming to a close, and I was just like, "It was a good movie. It wasn't a great movie." That's kind of how I felt too. What do you feel about it? You know, I read the comics. I know all the characters, and I will completely. Stand up when you two are telling me to sit down and say it was one hell of a movie. There's so many aspects of that movie that made it brilliant. The writing, the creativity behind it, the character development. There's so many catalysts to make this one of the most epic Captain America films. And the Rooster Brothers, I'm sorry, amazing job again by keeping people captivated. In it. And yeah, I, I can go on and on, but the movie was brilliant. I loved every part of it, and I was not bored at any point of time frame at all. So I feel like we're not getting to the question because this is how I felt about it. When I now I didn't read the actual Civil War, the meat of the story. I was reading all the comics leading up to that, mm -hmm. and leading up to it, I felt like it was going to be a better story than what they gave us in the movies. So, mm -hmm. well, to, to touch on that, so as in comparison to the story that was in the comic books, um, as far as that goes you would need to have literally a strain of movies to do what they did and tell that story. Right. right. As mm -hmm. far as beefing one movie up to do that and making it work, they did a good job because they did have, have a catalyst of a, a new um, Avenger who causes destruction. And after that, it, it's, it, it's, it's the same thing as in the comic books. It, it, it hits innocent lives, and that sparks the catalyst again for a, a event to happen that causes destruction to innocent lives that is the, the train wreck in which the Avengers have left as they have began to defend Earth. So would you say that, because um, for me, it, it was all really centralized about Winter Soldier, right? Very much so. And so would you say Winter Soldier played this uh, part of like Speedball, I think it was, in the uh, Civil War with the explosion no, and, and what they had there? No, Scarlet Witch did. Scarlet, Scarlet Witch. Witch was the Speedball of this. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, Winter I Soldier. See. Winter Soldier was right. not the reason why Winter right. Soldier wasn't is because it wasn't about Winter Soldier until he was spotted. You know, so at that point, um, you know, what actually started the movie off the first event that caused the the you know the snowball effect, as it were, right. was a, a school with Scarlet Witch, and it was this technically the speedball event. Right, right. Where she, uh, uh, we had that uh, explosion yeah. in that. Uh, Call some innocent lives. She, you know, and, and I had a reaction to that in the movie. It was like, why did she kind of like and throw she, that explosion in the, another direction? I actually know? forgot what the movie was actually about. Because I, I was like, wow, she just killed all those people? I forgot that's what it was really about. It was an explosion, and now they're going to have to pay for their actions. Yeah. Because that's, that's how I felt when it actually exploded. I was like, oh, man. Oh, yeah, this, that is what it is about. Yeah. So I, I think maybe she was that. Yeah. yeah. And she could, she was learning. She was still learning to control mm -hmm. and 
you know, I, I don't want to toss too much out there for the movie, but they explain that portion briefly enough in the movie to, to tail end. Mm -hmm. And that's why I know that she was the one that caused the initial, you know, rock over the hill moment. Okay. Yeah. I would so, agree with that. So, then, talk about some of the things that you guys liked about the movie. Uh, well, I mean, like, one of the things I absolutely loved is the way that they brought in Black Panther. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, a, a, a lot of ways they introduce a lot of these characters. Black Panther, Spider-Man, some of the biggest ones. And uh, uh, a lot of people, when they saw uh, um, Spider-Man in the trailer, they were just like, oh, my God, Spider-Man's in here. He just took away Captain America's shield. It's about to go down. Oh, yeah. But then, like, you know, everybody kind of forgot that Black Panther was kind of in it, I felt. And then when I saw the movie, and I saw Black Panther, and he was talking about, you know, that interaction with his father, and yeah. then, like, what happens, like, in the, uh, the whole speech and everything, and, and everything that he does to, like, suit up and really get into that Black Panther hero mode, I was like, yes, oh my god, this guy feels, like, completely overpowered, he's bulletproof, you know? Yeah. And he was, like, kicking ass. See, I really like Black Panther because a lot of times when they put African Americans in the movie, they're always one way they're always static either always angry or they're just kind of like wimpy he showed a, a range of his personality he showed his humility mm -hmm. when he knew his dad was a king he kisses his ring in, in, in the movie and then he also shows you know what i'm not a pushover i can kick some butt mm -hmm. when i need to but also i'm not going to let the rage take over but right. i'm still in control of my humanity so I thought that was really good. They did his they did his role really well. I really appreciated that. And, yeah. and, and, and it really showcased for me as far as like Black Panther. He's supposed to be one of the top ten uh, the smartest people in uh, right. the Marvel Universe. He's part of the Illuminati that they had in this oh, yeah. series. So he's wow. up there with uh, Tony Stark, Doctor Strange, Black Bull, a lot of these high-end characters, you know, Reed Richards. Is he's Illuminati? a Illuminati? Yeah, yeah, they have an Illuminati built in. Namor... You know, so they have like these top ten, you know, intellectuals of the Marvel universe, and he's in it. And so, and and that to me, when they kind of showed like the little parts of him, I was like, okay, this guy, he's thinking these things through. He's just not reacting, you know. So he's kind of plotting it. A little tail in from the comic world, though. You guys got to start reading the new, um, the new Black Panther series. I don't know if you guys know this, but oh. the new Black Panther series, the first couple, first comic book was just epic. But believe it or not. As we go into the Infinity War in the comic series, Black Panther just has the Infinity Gauntlet with all the all the gems just chilling in Wakanda with him. I'm like I'm sitting there going like, so he has the most OP weapon, just chilling, and that that, that, that did a little plug with the comic world in there. So read the comics because this series is gonna be amazing. Yeah, I didn't even know that. So yeah. he's like, oh, this little thing. Yeah, yeah he's like, I'm just keeping a corner. I wear that on Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what do you think about Spider-Man? I, I actually, oh, so well, to kind of go, go back and then still kind of work with the Spider-Man thing, as far as the movie goes is what I liked. The characters and the diversity between the characters and keeping them, I guess, keeping the story wrapped around its main character, but still giving us enough of every character. Spider-Man and Black Panther, they didn't give me enough, but they gave me enough to crave more. I wanted more in the movie. I wanted to see them, I wanted to see them develop more, but they get, it's just like, they give you a taste, and the rest of the movie you're still like, is he coming back? Like, because I want to see him again. Yeah. So, but I, I, I really liked Spider-Man, the suit was great. Um, you still kind of get that CG flow from it, but because of the character, and and how Tom Holland just, I'm sorry, he, I'm not sorry, he freaking nailed it! <laughs> I I'm not sorry that. at all! I think so, yeah. Yeah, and, and the thing is, you didn't think about that. You were so in, involved with the movie when he was just doing his thing. Yeah, I really was, too, you know? I let him kind of take the reins and, like, spin his webs, you know? And, like, yeah, I mean, everything that he was doing, his introduction, the way that, you know, Tony goes in and recruits him, kind of out of the comic book, really, mm -hmm. but it was their own take on it, and I really enjoyed that whole part, you know? It's like... Like, I know who your true identity is, but, like, let's move it all along and... Let's talk about our mate. Yeah, um, Whoa. <laughs> and, uh, 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 that wasn't fair. <laughs> See, when I talk about our mate, I'm going to have some problems. I have some <laughs> things I didn't like about the movie, and that's definitely one of them. Really? So, what did you but, like about Aunt May? She's a little bit too young. She's, little she's little... too young okay. um, to be Aunt May. Okay. Um, just because, to me, he, she played more of a grandmother role. He respected her. He really cared about her. At that age, I feel like you're more, especially with a young mom, you're going to be more rebellious. Mm -hmm. But 
They didn't, they didn't show that, but mm-hmm. that had been more realistic to me. But okay. they only showed her for two seconds. It was fine. I know it was trying to make her, you know, have some type of stage presence. Sure. And not just this old lady in the background. Mm-hmm. So I get it. But I would have liked her to be a little older. But she, but then if she was older, she wouldn't have been able to kind of like flirt with Stark on the couch. Right. right. But, and also the thing about the yeah. age of, of the Spider-Man in this, it's, this comic, he's still in high school. He's, he's like, like in ninth grade. Though. Yeah, he's, he's still, so at this point, she can be that old because the thing is, Spider-Man really starts to make a presence in the original comic series and even in the Civil War when he's more of a, you know, adult. So mm-hmm. give her about six years, that hair's turning gray, and she has more of an old woman presence. Yeah. So she was there, yeah, the timeline's almost. pretty good. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to the, okay, if we're taking it from the comic book, Aunt May, uh, you know, she's like really old. She's really fragile, so I mean, it really puts her in a position where if, uh, you know, when Peter Parker's identity is out there and his uh, nemesis are after him, then, you know, they're gunning for him, but they're shooting Aunt May, and it's just like, oh, man, we got Spider-Man One More Day, which is another, like, little mini-series going on. Now, I liked Spider-Man and uh, Black Panther. I think that they gave us just enough. Mm-hmm. I didn't really need any more. I felt like they kind of carried a lot more out of the movie <laughs> just as much as Stark and, and they did. America did. Yeah. And they didn't downplay him. They were just as strong as the enemy that they were fighting. Yeah. And it was just awesome. I love Spider-Man. I was I was a little nervous about him. Yeah. But I loved him. I loved him when he catches uh, Bucky's arm. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. yeah. You got a metal arm? Oh, man. That's cool. That was cool. Right. You know? yeah. So I thought was that fun. was cool. Right? That was fun. Yeah. Right. Um, I think I thought that they they needed those two characters. They don't have they don't have the Hulk and they yeah. don't have Thor. So what other characters are you gonna have to carry? I feel like Vision movie? was like the replacement for Thor, maybe in some instances, you know. Um, but uh, uh, <laughs> someone's not feeling the Vision. <laughs> the Vision did. Uh, vision did you sucked. Feel like he, he held back. <laughs> he the sucked. What happened to this ultimate he held like back. godlike figure? Right. He just like. Was a punk through the whole movie, right? Yeah, I don't understand. He's missing. Like, oh, oh I just I didn't like him. And see, this is, this is one of the things that I I want to go see the movie again. Um, there are things going on with Vision in the movie that people aren't paying attention to. He he mentions certain things about the Infinity Stone in his head. Yeah, and it drops. It the moment he did that, and the movie kept going, you can see it in him that there is an inner conflict with that character and what that gem is doing to him specifically because of what that gem actually does to people. So that's why he acted differently in this movie. And I, I pay attention to that. The, the, I would say the biggest details to pay attention to in the background are Vision and Scarlet Witch. The little things they do with them are going to set off big transitions as we go into the Infinity War, I promise you. Yeah, and I think that they showed us some um, character development between them two, and just like Vision as well, just like, he, he's a he's a uh, AI, you know, and he's a mm-hmm. learning computer, but I mean, he's always learning. They showed him, it was kind of funny, you know, in a sweater, kind of like cooking and stuff, so I thought that was like a little funny. That was kind of cool. Yeah, and then um, his little, you know, interaction with Scarlet Witch, and he's, he's trying to be protective of everyone, you know, because I think that he knows that he's powerful and he doesn't want to hurt anyone, but he wants everyone to work together. But he still has to choose his side ultimately. No, but you can't let people just overtake you. I felt like she knew more about the stone than he did because when she was in the kitchen putting all that weight on him, mm-hmm. the stone was red. It wasn't yellow anymore. Yeah, so it was like she, she was controlling it or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was like, well, where did that come from? Mm-hmm. I. I just didn't like it. It maybe it will play a better role, a bigger role in another movie. But for this movie, mm-hmm. it just didn't do it for I, me. I think Vision overall mm-hmm. doesn't understand mm-hmm. how strong he is, um, specifically because he, like I said, he says things about the Infinity Stone, and he he said he's trying to understand it so he can one day own it, and that was the biggest drop down. Sorry for the spoiler on that one, guys. Um, but um, that that drop alone let me know that he himself is unaware of his own capabilities, and that that, that that's why on, on the fact that you're not liking Vision, I understood Vision in this entire movie and why he was the way he was, which is why I appreciated it. Mm. Yeah, and uh, I, I think that uh, you know the 
the common thing that we have with uh, uh, Wanda actually like becoming more stronger it really showcase her power too. Go for it. Okay, so some things you would have changed about the movie, if anything. Mm -hmm. The things I would have changed is probably the different villain character. He could have probably did a lot more. I would have liked to see what they did with the super soldiers. Uh, they had them kind of locked up, um, and they Spoiler. really they, <laughs> they really did nothing with them. Um, I think that they miss out on an opportunity to do that. Uh, the super soldier serum, everything kind of revolves around that, and they had that yeah. at their disposal, and they kind of let it slip. They definitely missed an opportunity for Bucky to try to redeem himself. Yeah, he could have actually tried to maybe save Cap or um, um, Iron Man from one of them, mm -hmm. you know, um, and that's kind of like, I don't want to be what they made me. I'm going to choose to be something different. A hero. So I'm going to go against them. You know, mm -hmm. so I, I would have liked that to just show up and they're already dead. It's kind of, it kind of killed it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, what I would have changed is, and it, it, this would have made a movie for me, if one, they would have discussed the actual law or the bill they were going to have to sign okay. a little more and had a little more uh, friction between each other. I felt like that would have really made me believe that they were really in, at war with each other. And two, when they were fighting, they should have all been going all, at least 80%. If not all out, at least 80%. They don't need to kill each other, but at least try to pin one another down. And I feel like they weren't doing that. They're like, oh, no, come with me. We don't need to fight. Let's just be friends. Don't hit me too hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't <laughs> like that. They should have really went all out and said, see what you made me do. Now stay down. And that would have been more of like a war, and then at the end they could have came together. Yeah. But that's just me personally. I like the movie. But that's what I would have changed, and that's why I didn't come out the movie theater like, oh my god, I've got to see it again. <laughs> I, I think with Age of Ultron, we kind of got that sense with the Hulk kind of like losing his mind and going rampage, and then the Hulk right. buster. Right. So that was like and they really were desperate all out. to get him down. Yeah, yeah. They, they they couldn't pin the Hulk down. I mean, he's the Hulk once he's gone. I mean, his mind is gone. He's a rampage, you know? You know who was going to win? Yeah. It was going to be the Hulk Buster or the Hulk? Yeah. We pretty much knew who was going to win this one. The people who were more desperate to get away. Sure, yeah. So that's what I didn't like. Yeah. Uh, I can see where you guys are going with it overall. Um, as far as things that I would change, honestly, I wouldn't change anything about the movie. Um, what? Wouldn't change anything about the movie. What? Um, okay. So, Baron Zemo, for instance. You, know, oh. you guys didn't like the villain too much. And um, the thing is, Baron Zemo, even though at the end it was kind of a cop-out, but at the same time it, it didn't happen, um, <clears throat> you have to understand who Baron Zemo is, is in the comics. And the thing is, you have to realize how brilliant this character was to be the underlining foundation of everything that was happening without having to lift maybe a finger. He, he barely touched anybody. He was so far in the background. And he is the one... It, it was the fire under the pot. And the pot just kept he going. He couldn't because, touch anyone. He admitted that he couldn't touch anyone. And then the people he did touch, he did have to do something. He was killing people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He did what he had to do where he needed to do it. But, but he only did saying. it for a year. No, they made it seem it, like he was just doing it for like five years he was. straight. He I wasn't. Was, he said, I've been following you for a whole year. A following. Now, did you not see the part where they showed his war history. What? They showed exactly who he was and what he did before he did this. Now keep in mind the story he told. He he was a, a, a war, I don't know if it was a hero or what, but he was a war badass. And then when something happened to him, due to what events that happened in Sar Sarkovia, this changed a man. A year ago. And, and, but still, it was enough keep it. to trigger. It was enough to trigger. And it's, I'm sorry, it's the taking effect. I'm sorry, but it's, this just happened. I've been staying out of this for so long, but now you, now you triggered it. I have these certain set of skills, and I'm going to do this. So the, it showed the brilliance behind the man. Yeah, he maybe should have had more of a stage presence, but that would have taken away from other characters in the movie. At that point, you would be walking out of this movie saying, there so. was too many characters in this movie. No, it wouldn't. It, it would, because you'd, you start getting mixed up between the two of them, because the thing is... You can't have uh, a crazy supervillain that's taking up so much presence, yet have this these two guys going at it at the end. 
And it did build up because, yeah, there, there's a part in the movie where even Scarlet Witch is saying, you're only doing 80%, you're holding back. I'm sorry, not 80%, you said 80% earlier, but she's like, you're holding back your punches. And, you know, that she understood. She was reason. awesome. She was great. Yeah. Scarlet she Witch. She was what everyone should have been doing. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, but she was Why the is everyone only? playing games? Because she <laughs> dis- she's not as disciplined yeah. as the other characters. I mean, they showed that when she caused well, She's a warrior, and she understands what battle is. It doesn't matter yeah. if you're my friend or not. Yeah. Out of respect, I'm going to go all out on you. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm not going to half-ass it. I'm not going to pity-pat. I'm going to go all out, and whoever's the best is going to come out on top. I don't need to kill you mm-hmm. right. to show that I'm the best, but I'm going to at least try to do all I can to get you down. Mm-hmm. Right. And she was the only one that was doing she it. She was really at the center when they had the ultimate fight, like the team versus team, yeah. and she was really like doing that support-assist role and right. like, like blocking punches over here, kind of like helping where she right. could. She was like, what are you guys doing? Ah, all right, get over there. Yeah, right. She actually right. was kind of the... It showed how amazingly powerful she is. Yeah. Um, but it also shows how unstable she is, which it defines the character herself. I don't think she was unstable. Every, she, she everything unstable. she did was how? Um, because she. I mean, at, so at the very beginning, when the explosion went off, that kind of showed. How, how does she know how, how what kind of bomb it is? How strong it is? She doesn't really know. Right. She can't. That doesn't mean she's not disciplined. Well, no, it totally does. Because the thing of it this way, you you said that they're hold, they were holding back, but towards the end of the movie, and the same thing happened in the comic books. Same exact thing happened in the comic books. Every time they fought, they went at it, and they were always holding back in the comics. And it wasn't until the last battle when even Captain America yeah. said, you know what, fine, gloves are off, Tony. Yeah. And he beats the shit out of Iron Man. Yeah. And completely eradicates him, takes him out of the equation. Yeah. And at the end of this movie, it capitalized not the way you wanted it to, but it capitalized enough for me because it did take it up to the next level for me. It did take it to the level where, you know what, they're literally going at it right now, and you, you, you just literally put them out of commission completely. Yeah, I did get the sense that, you know, it, it, it was a, a fight to the death at that mm-hmm. point, you know, uh, with... Uh, it, was ser- uh, Cap, it was serious. You, you know, you felt it with Cap going Man. after yeah. him, and he was just, like, relentless, you know? Yeah. He was... He was cracking through everything, you know, just at, like in the comic books, yeah. and I love that. The I, armor's I bending, he's catching you know, the punches, he's crushing the They armor. do that slow-mo between them, oh, yeah. where like he gets a shield, and it's just like, psh, and that's right out of the cover in yeah. the comic, you know? So I, I like the way that they're incorporating these things, you know? No, what I did like at the end, when he shoves the shield in his uh, chest. His chest piece, yeah. Spoiler! <laughs> I've been doing spoilers the whole time. Yeah, so we have to do the commission on this one. So I tried, guys. I really tried. He puts it in his chest, and he pretty much makes him. He immobilizes him. Mm-hmm. And in the Avengers movie, Captain America asks um, Iron, Iron Man, "Who are you without the suit?" Right. Yeah. And at that moment, I feel like Tony realized who he really was. Forget all that smart alecky response he gave. Right. At that moment, in that movie, Civil War, he was like, I'm nothing without this suit. Yeah. Stark wants to be on top. That's the way he's always been. That's the, He's never going to change. And that, that that's why this movie overall, it is a Captain America movie. The cop-out thing, I don't agree with that. Because it's a Captain America movie defined on a character's morals and how he pushes. And how he redefines bringing people together and unifying and that's what that's what he does i don't really see so, what that argument has to do with anything it doesn't matter if it was avengers movie it doesn't matter if it was a captain america movie was it a good movie what did they bring so what 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 it's called i mean it's the same people in there so it doesn't matter from the same universe so you still bring me everything that i want to see the, his whole logic to why he didn't want to sign it made no sense being he was going to be a fugitive so if you sign it and they say, no, you can't do this, and if you do, we'll arrest you, it's the same thing as, I'm not going to sign it, I'm doing what I'm going to want to do, and then get arrested later. Right, yeah. It's okay. the same thing. No, his mentality was, I'm not going to sit here and sit under a, a buckle. You of, are already. You know what? Here. You, you, in other words, he didn't want to be a baby in a carriage. Okay, now you can come out of your crib, baby. Now you can do what I let you do, because they do it anyway. the baby. No. They, they did it anyway. They, they yeah. did. He They moved. locked everybody up. He, they did eventually, but mm-hmm. still, they did what they had to do. They moved forward. They continued. You can sign it and still do the same thing. I think no, uh, uh, because the, event, no, Iron Man was following those regulations. Right, Iron Man followed. He it. stuck to that, and it wasn't until he realized that he was wrong, mm-hmm. and he screwed up, 
that he realized I've got to be on the other side of the fence. I don't think he realized he was, it was wrong to sign. I, I, I don't think that he realized it because they never went back and uh, re uh, no. did amendments to the. Now he did talk about that when they sat down in the conference room and um, uh, Iron Man uh, Tony Stark was talking to Steve Rogers. You know, just like here I have these pens. You know, gave him a little story about that. Mm -hmm. And if you sign it, you know, we could uh, then talk about like uh, doing some amendments to this. You know, Sokovia Accords and. And doing things like that, but as it is, I'm not going to sign it. You know, it was Captain America's standpoint, and they were both very one-sided. It was just like you got to sign it, yeah, or you can be on this other it side really and, and retire. You know, and and Hawkeye, he was completely like MIA for the longest time, which I kind of loved too, because he played to his spiral very well. He did a very good job, and he yeah. just kind of showed up. You know, I liked him in yeah. yeah, like he was just like, okay, I'm just going to see how this goes with everyone. Okay, now I, I'm needed. Let me, you know, kind of sneak on in right. here. Um, so I absolutely love that. And okay. so he, he he didn't sign it. So yeah. So overall, overall, Chris, what are you giving overall? Overall, one I out wanna, of ten. I want to hear you guys first. Go for it. Listen well, to this, guys. Okay, so one out of ten. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll start. I'll be the martyr here. Uh, one out of ten. Um, <laughs> oh, the crows. No. <laughs> um, uh, I would have to give it. Um, I'll give it an eight. I'm gonna give it a hard eight. Uh, I would give it a four out of five stars, whatever you want to call it. I'll give it an eight. Um, I liked it. I really liked it. Um, I wanted to love it, um, but there's other movies. Uh, you know what? When it comes to the Marvel movies, um, it's gonna be probably there up in my top five. I'll rewatch it, and I might like it even more. There was a lot of filmography that was kind of nice. I like how they had the city names. Uh, kind of uh, in your face in your face just Boom. really big and bold Berlin when it showed <laughs> Queens yeah. you know everybody was just like clapping like yeah. everyone yeah. knew Spider-Man oh yeah. yeah yeah it's like instantly so there are things like that the filmography in the movie and where they take place they went all over the world with this and like, yeah. showed us really nice things um, and then you know really at the end you know where everyone stands where everyone was Black Panther Spider-Man um, so I want to see more of that. I'm more uh, hyped about you know Black Panther's movie coming up, Spider Man's movie coming up, and what they do yeah. there. Um, but I feel like you know it didn't uh, beat my number one spot. It it's fighting for the number two spot really with a couple different movies when it comes to the Marvel universe. Yeah, I would probably have to give it. I want to give it an eight. I really do. <laughs> it's hard because I want to give it a ten. I feel yeah. let down that I can't give this movie that I was so anxious to go see right. a 10. Because I, I I haven't been this excited you about You saw a one trailer, right? right? One trailer. Right, I saw one trailer. None of the extra fights things Nothing that they else. gave. Yeah. I just wanted to just be wowed when I got in the theater. I liked the story a little bit. I liked mm -hmm. their fighting a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't... I didn't leave like, oh my god, you see how he slammed him in the car? I didn't. I didn't get that, and maybe I'm just violent. Maybe I'm just violent, and that's why <laughs> you're I didn't. Right. Really, I didn't like the fights, but yeah. I mean, I like the fights, but it didn't. It didn't wow me. Um, so I'm gonna have to give it a seven point five. Okay. I want to give it more because it made a black man awesome, <laughs> but it's hard for me to do that because I feel like that's not a reason to give a movie more. So I'm gonna give it a seven point five. Sorry. Guys, I'm joining the crowd, and I'm going to say I'm giving it a flat-out, hard-coded, no doubt under any circumstances, 10. 10. I'm giving five, it a 10. Five stars. It's a perfect movie. It's a perfect movie. You know why? Um, for movies myself, you've got to connect to the viewer. Now, my 10 is solely based upon you know how I felt with the movie. And the thing is, I felt connected to this movie, and it wasn't for the fandom. Obviously, I am Team Cap 100%. But that wasn't that wasn't it. It made me laugh. It made me get involved. It made me feel. It made me feel for both characters. I did get my hero to villain complex once I understood what Baron Zemo was doing. The best thing I can give in a comparison is it reminded me of Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians oh. of the Galaxy did that for me too. It made me laugh. It made me involved. I enjoyed the movie. It was fun. And you know what? They have so many great plugs where you just have that slight drop of humor, even in this most serious moments. Yeah. Yeah. And it just makes the movie enjoyable for me. I was immersed, and 
even just introducing Spider-Man, Black Panther, and we have not talked about Ant-Man, Paul Rudd. Mwah! All right, so I got to say that. Uh, <laughs> the, Ten! <laughs> when it comes to the character, I, I will definitely give it to you. You know, they, they really um, gave us... Uh, uh, equal a dose of every single character. Oh, yeah. Every single character. The movie was very balanced. It was it was a well balanced movie. You know, it, it was well focused. The plot was there. It was easy watch. Mm -hmm. You can follow it seamlessly. You know, we didn't get what you know Batman Superman no. put out for us, where it was just like you know, okay, how many nightmares is Batman gonna have, and what are all these dream sequences? Oh my God, it's like overload. Um, so they didn't even set that up for us. They kept us on pace with where this movie is and the plot. It was great. They had a strong foundation. Uh, they manipulated the comic books uh, to have this original movie, and I really appreciated that. Ant Man, first of all, he was dope. He was hilarious. Oh my god! Even during the fights, when he's yes. like crawling all over the place, <laughs> like he went from small to big, and he was just like, he was the trump card. He oh, was, oh my god! And, and I, I, I called it. I kind of felt he was going to be the trump card. Yeah. And he was their uh, distraction. Yeah, and he, he did you so. Know? I'm sorry, Paul Rudd, you, you are one amazing man in this movie. Yeah, and, he was funny. And just to touch on it real quickly, so if, if, it, if it gives you guys any comfort, this movie actually would get a 9 for me, but the reason why it gets a 10 is because it connected with me. That's what pumped it up specifically on my own terms. So I guess if you want to say on a scale, if I were just a critic, just judging the movie, I'd give it a 9. Because, you know, it's really hard to base a perfect movie. I guess you just kind of gave me that clarity right now. As far as a perfect mo a movie goes, but on a personal perspective, it is a 10 because of how it connected with me personally. So I guess maybe hopefully that'll make it. I think that's fair. Bit. I think there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. <laughs> nothing wrong with feeling it right here when you watch it. It was movie, right, right there. So, you know, it's just, all right. But, um, yeah, I really enjoyed the movie. It was, it was great. Yeah, uh, you know, I love Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, they did kind of like what uh, these new Disney movies are where like they're like killing a person and making you cry right off the bat. It's like, what are you doing to <laughs> yeah, me? Yeah, it's like... Heartstrings, yeah, right. take them. Like, oh, no. <laughs> Here we go, and it's just like right. At Hard at work, my butt. Here, kitty, kitty. Hey, 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 hey.